not the one you're here for. He's the one you're here for. Okay, thank you. I'll try it again. Uh, as I may have told you a while ago, I was born and raised in Florida. Uh, I was born in the woods. My daddy died when I was seven months old. Uh, my mother remarried in about a year and a half. And uh, before my, I was before I was turned five years old, my stepdad died. He was a really a super nice guy, and uh, I loved him dearly. But he died. My mother had five kids by then: three Wilsons, and two by my stepdad. His name was Coward. And uh, but she was heartbroken and said she'd never, never, never marry again. Uh, but we lived in the woods of North Florida. We lived with a grand my, my, with my grandfather my mother's daddy, and uh, he was a farmer, had one plow and one horse. Uh, my brother and I helped him farm, and uh, he had a 20-fingered picker. That was my brother and I. <laughs> uh, that's not funny. <laughs> anyway, but we, 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 we had plenty of food to eat, no problems. We had a lot of chickens, eight chickens, eight eggs, and uh, uh, but my granddaddy's land wasn't his land. It was just somebody else's land, and he, he was a sharecropper. And the shack we lived in, uh, he didn't even own that shack. Uh, there was a pitcher pump out in the yard. We had a bucket. We'd go out to the pump and pitch, uh, fill it with water, and bring it to the back porch, put it up on a shelf, and. Uh, I had a dipper hanging on a rusty nail. And there were five kids, and my mother, my granddaddy, and my grandmother, we all used that dipper to drink water. I don't never, never saw it get washed, but uh, it's probably good for us. Anyway, uh, when we had to get off the man's land, uh, we had to go south to 100 miles to winter in Florida. And uh, my granddaddy Wilson died when we were up there in the woods, and uh, my mother said, uh, we got to have a meeting with the Wilson kids. And uh, so it was winter time. My mother cooked on a wood burning stove. So we sat, I sat on the floor of the kitchen, in the kitchen by that stove. It kept warm. And when the meeting was, that Wilson kids had inherited some money from my grandfather. They sold his junk. And uh, how much did we get, Mama? $11 a piece. Myself, my brother, and my ugly sister. You should see my ugly sister. Oh, boy. Oh, you should see her. She's about two years older than I am. And uh, her, she could eat, her teeth were so buck that, that she could eat corn off the cob through a picket fence. <laughs> and, and that was a sight to behold. I wish I had a picture to show you, but I don't. We didn't have, we didn't have a camera. So anyway, uh, we went down south. That $11 that we inherited, I got 11, my brother got 11, and my sister got 11. Uh, my mother said, it's your money, you can have it, do what you want to do with it. But she said, however, she had her, her out a nice heifer calf. And if we could buy that calf, it'd make a wonderful milk cow for the whole family. Okay, mama, if you think we don't have to buy the cow, buy the cow. So she spent her $33, at least she said she did. She might have got that out of 20 bucks and kept, <laughs> and kept the change. We don't really ever know. I used to tease her, tease her about that. Anyway, my little school I went to up there in the woods was a two-room schoolhouse. The room I was in was I had a row of first graders, another row of second graders, a row and a half of third graders, and so forth. Same teacher for four years. When I left there, I was halfway through the fourth grade. When I got to Winter Haven, Florida, uh, and went to school, I just discovered that I didn't know nothing. <laughs> and, uh, so I didn't like school. Uh, I failed the fifth grade, and uh, then when I did get in high school, I had to drop out in the 10th grade because of pneumonia. It wasn't I had pneumonia, I just couldn't spell it. <laughs> so I quit school. Um, it was the fall of 50, and uh, in December of 51, or 50 rather, uh, I signed up to go to the Marine Corps. I was 17 years old, turning 17 in November, and. Uh, that gentleman, the, the recruiter, told me I'd, my mother had to co-sign for me. So uh, she wasn't real tickled about it, but I'm out of school, and I wasn't, hadn't gotten any trouble, but she thought, okay, so she signed. 
So I went in the Marine Corps. Signed up for three years. The Korean War was starting. And uh, uh, I joined the Marine Corps. Went to Paris Hall in Santa Carolina for boot camp. Wound up coming out on a troop train to California to Camp Pendleton. And I trained there for three, two, two years or more. Uh, they, uh, General Jesse Chesty Puller, Lewis Puller, uh, was our general for a while. And he asked for 200 volunteers to go on a special mission. I thought we'd go to Korea. And at young, dumb age, I was, they, told, they told us how tough we were. I'm not sure we were that tough, but he said we were. So uh, I volunteered to go with 200 guys to go on this special mission. And I thought surely we were going to Korea. But anyway, we didn't. We headed kind of east. Uh, then we kind of drifted to the north. We wound up landing on a dirt strip in about 75 miles north of Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, we were out there. We had no idea where we were going or what we were going to do. We went out there to witness an atom bomb blast. And uh, so I saw, I got bombed 1952 in April, I think it was. But uh, hell of a sight. They went down to ground zero and uh, saw the equipment they put down there to show us the damage that that bomb would do. It was a hell of a sight, a hell of a sight. But uh, anyway, I'm glad I went. It was a hell of an experience. One night we had a free bus to town to Las Vegas. There was no strip. It was just Fremont Street downtown, and half a dozen casinos. They had uh, free beer for the servicemen, all the corn nuts you could eat, and co shrimp cocktails for 50 cents. Anyway, we had a good time. But uh, uh, where do you go? When we got through out there, while we were still there, they swept us off with brooms. And uh, uh, they, uh, a lieutenant walked up to me and said, uh, do you mind if we put this in your hometown newspaper? I said, sir, you're, you're the boss, whatever you want to do. So he snapped my picture. 30 years later, my mother was visiting her. She went to her chest of drawers and pulled out that article. I didn't even know it was in the paper until 30 years later. But uh, put, put some of these out. Never started about over the road. Here's some more. I want to, hey. Go down the line and just put every row and have them show them down. Please? Please, thank you. It's going to come down. So we'll do this. It's coming down. I don't know if you want to get to go. Anyway. He didn't tell me. Um, when I was at Camp Pendleton, there were no freeways here in Southern California. None. The Pacific Coast Highway was the highway from Tijuana to Oregon. I think to clear up to Oregon. But uh, uh, I got to be a Model A pickup truck that I bought from, from a guy who was shipping to Korea and uh, uh, started going to Long Beach, California with that Model A and to Belmar, California, and chasing girls. And uh, that was fun. So uh, anyway, after I got out of service a year and a half later, uh, I was in there for three years. I got out January of 54. And uh, uh, a year and a half later, I got married. My wife and I, she was going to college to be a school teacher. So I started out in the produce business, peddling produce, cabbage and lettuce, just trying to get ahead. And uh, uh, now that's not funny. Uh, it was true. I was in the produce business for a long time, 27 years. But I sold a lot of potatoes and uh, a lot of tomatoes and everything else. But uh, I finally figured out there was more money in property than there was potatoes. So uh, I dabbled around a little bit of property. I put $1,500 down payment on a property and uh, rented, out the, uh, rented out the house that was on and uh, used the back of it to park my trucks. I had three trucks. And business was very good, very good. So. Uh, I outgrew the property, seven, seven or eight trucks. And I tried to buy the neighbor on either side of me, neither one wanted to sell. So uh, I had to get out in the big world and look and see if I could find another place to go. So I found a big old barn on the Laundry Boulevard, Bellflower, that was for sale. Had an existing loan on it with $21,500, with 6% with a private party. I 
borrowed money from the potato distributor in Los Angeles that I was buying all my potatoes from. And uh, uh, he loaned me the money, 28500 I think what the figure was, at 8%. So I bought that property for nothing down. Nothing down. And I used that barn for about five or six years. The city came along one day and told me they needed a 30-foot strip of my property and uh, my building was in the barn was in the way, in the 30 feet. And they went 30 feet by 200 feet of my property. And uh, I told them I didn't want to sell. They explained, explained that enema domain, is that what they call that? Yeah. Enema domain? Yeah. Anyway, they explained to me, we can take your property now and settle with you in court three or four years later. And I said, well, that don't sound like much fun. So. Uh, uh, they paid me $33,000. I lost my barn, had to move, my loading dock. I built a big cooler, big as this room in that building. But I had a big freezer put in. I'm selling frozen food and fresh produce. And, uh, but I had to move. Well, I took the city money, kept what was left over, and I've been renting it out ever since. I bought that property in 1964. You got a picture of that? No? They went. You got a picture of it. I know you do. Probably. Open it up and let's see it. Why don't you do the mama's insurance first? Okay, okay. Okay. They want to tell me about mama's insurance. When my brother was born, uh, he's uh, now 85 years old. And the public record said that Mrs. Wilson had a baby boy. So this insurance company guy from Gulf Life Insurance Company came out there in the woods in his car and told my mother, oh, what a beautiful baby. Oh, my goodness. You better put some insurance on that kid and uh, uh, just in case something happened. So the insurance premium was a nickel a week, five cents a week. And so if she paid it for 20 years, uh, she'd have a paid up policy on that boy. And uh, when my sister was born, as ugly as she was, uh, Mama bought, bought another policy on her for another nickel a week. And when I was born, I was so pretty. And, uh, so Mama, of course, she had to put another nickel on me. She should have been betting on the, my father, but he died seven months later. But uh, she bet on the wrong horse. So, <laughs> so anyway. Um, when my half-sister born, uh, then another one, half-sister, so mom was got to spend five, 25 cents a week. But how many calculators got in the room? Show me a calculator, show me a calculator. I ain't not very many. Anyway, I urge you guys all, please get a calculator and then learn how to use it. But those that have a calculator, uh, put in <coughs> five cents payment. And I'm assuming that Gulf Life had the wherewithal to put money to work at 12%. 20%. What? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, that five cents a week <laughs> times 52 weeks <laughs> equals how much? So it divided that by 12, it's 22 cents a month. So put 22 cents a month in payment. <coughs> and 12 percent under I and 240 months under the N start with zero PV the future value of that equation is $217.64 for the 20 years and uh, move that over put input PV move that money to PV present value no more payments. My brother is now, uh, how many years have gone by? 65. How many? 85. How many? 85 years. 85? 85 what? Years. No, no, no. The 20 years went by. Now we've got 65 years left. How many months is that? 780. 780? Okay, put 780 under the end. How much is future value? Hello? 
Somebody tell me. 510-978-52. Say it again. 510-978-52. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, the death benefit for each kid when they pass away, somebody would collect 250 bucks. That was the most that was everybody going to pay, the insurance company. That was it. And it sounded good 85 years ago, but uh, my brother's still alive. My ugly sister with the buck teeth still alive. Clyde's still alive. And my two sisters, the half sisters, are still alive. So my sister's 83. I'm 82, and uh, the youngest sister is 78 this fall. So we're all getting there. But anyway, that number times five people is two and a half million dollars. Is that what you got? Yeah, two and a half million? Now that's how insurance companies get rich. Rich. And from a nickel a week? My God. But anyway, that really happened. We told our mother, when she's alive, Mama, that's your money, you paid it in. We don't want the money. We gotta to die to collect anyway. We'd rather you, the insurance company take advantage of you one more time. They have a surrender value, they call it. They'll give you some money. They're certainly not gonna give you all that money back. I have no idea how much money she did get, but we urged her to get it, cash it in, take the money, buy whiskey with it, or whatever you want and I close anything you want, take a trip. Uh, and uh, she did. She took the money and spent it. I'm glad she did. But anyway, what's next? Bud's pension plan. Bud Lord's pension plan. Bud's from Indiana. He hitchhiked to California at age 19. He got out and stopped in Fullerton, California on Orange Start Boulevard and stumbled into the Kimberly Clark office telling me he was looking for a job. So uh, they said, son, sit down here, let's talk. So he says, if you'll give, we'll give you a job, we'll try you out, but if you'll stick with the company, show up on time, do your job, stay with us till you're age 55 or 36 years, whichever's first, uh, we'll have a pension for you. So picture this, Bud did go to work for him, he did stay at work for 36 years, if the Kimberly Clark Company would put in 15 bucks a month payment, if they could make that money or 12%, I'm sure they do, maybe better than that. But for 36 years, how many months is that? 432. Say what? 432. 432? So put $15 in your calculator in the payment. 32 months at 12%, starting with zero. How much would you have at the end of that? Correct. Now, that money, that's the retirement money that the Kimberly Clark Company controls, that's the pot of gold, that piece of money was continued to make 12%. So times point one two is uh, 13,066 bucks a year, divided by 12. That gives Mr. Lord, if he gets all the cash from the 12% the money produces, uh, he gets $1,088 and 89 cents per month till he, for the rest of his life. Well, he and I got acquainted when we go to a class in, similar to this class in Orange County for 20 years at least. Um, that's where I met Bud, nice guy. Uh, he asked me one day, he said, I go to work at six o'clock in the morning and get off at 2.30 in the afternoon. Right, he said, would you mind if I come over to Bellflower and hang around with you? I said, Bud, I don't mind. I got one thing to tell you though, you gotta do this. When you come over, I have a customer to rent something to, I'm trying to buy something from them, trying to sell something to them, uh, I want you to keep your lip zipped. I don't care nothing about your opinion, don't butt in, don't say one word. If you start talking when I, in front of my customer, that's, I don't want you to come, come back no more. We're through with you visiting over here. But if you do your job, <coughs> I'll do mine. If you beat me up after they leave, I don't mind. You can say, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you try that? It's okay, I don't care. Well, he would go to, we'd, go, we'd, go to, we'd go to dinner together and uh, he'd do the driving. I think he'd been a former 
person that maybe consumed too much alcohol. <laughs> and so he was dried himself out and became a better guy, I think. But anyway, he'd do the driving and I'd do the drinking. And uh, <laughs> so uh, we had good times together. But Bud Lord retired and lived six years and he died. And the Kimberly Clark Company was nice enough they give the widow 375 bucks per month till she dies. And when she dies, uh, the company keeps the pot of gold. He didn't get it. Uh, isn't that silly? You bought a human being's life for 15 bucks a month. But I guess that's better than nothing. But uh, Bud Lord did, in fact, uh, come to those classes, and he learned his lessons well about property and run the calculator, and he bought some property. And it probably makes him a whole, whole lot more money than his pension did. And the property didn't die when he did. The income, the income keeps coming in. What do we got here, son? What's next? Mr. Okay. I was in the produce business, as I told you. I wound up moving out of the barn on the Lander Boulevard. And uh, so uh, uh, I got me a much bigger building a big warehouse with a whole lot of stuff. And I forgot, in 1972 or three, uh, every price of everything went up. Sugar was high, pinto beans were high, cheese was high, uh, all kinds of stuff was high. I don't know why that happened, but it did. And I had my stuff, people, we were strictly wholesale, but uh, people come banging on the wall, banging on the door, can't we let me in, I wanna buy something. So we finally made up our mind we're going to open up to the public. So we stacked stuff up high all around the walls of that property, that building inside, and opened to the public. And we sold stuff pretty cheap, and business was great. A good friend of mine from Orange County that had a retail store, he called me one day and said, Clyde, he said, now, I've got a friend of mine that uh, heard about you, and he'd like to come over and see what you're doing. So this, I said, well, bring him over here, I don't care. So this guy came over and uh, I showed him around and I said, stack it high and sell it cheap. And uh, I didn't know who the guy was, didn't really care. But his name was Saul Price. He went down to San Diego and uh, opened up, got him a building, I don't know if he built it or just opened it in another empty building, I don't remember, I don't know. But uh, opened a store, had a lot of room, a lot of parking and uh, so he had a place called the Price Club. Anybody ever heard of the Price Club? Well, it wound up growing more of them. And then later, he sells out to Costco. That rascal should have let me have a few shares of stock or buy in, but uh, he didn't do it. I didn't ask him, didn't have sense enough anyway. But uh, anyway, that's the beginning of the Costco. And they, I don't know how many stores they got, but three or 400, I'm sure, scattered all over hell and they'd do a bang up business. But they got the room, the parking, and the uh, wherewithal. And uh, anyway, I never complained about it, but no, no, I didn't care, I really didn't care. I had inadequate parking for what I was doing, trying to buy the neighbor on either side of me then. I never could get that done, so what all happened, happened for a good reason. I mean, I'm out of business. And I've been out of business now longer than I was ever in business. I was in business for 27 years. Now I've been out 33, I think it is. But, uh, uh, what well, you got next on that list? What first? Say what? What do you first? What do you say? <coughs> oh. <laughs> uh, how do you know if a deal is good enough? If you find a piece of property, whether it's a duplex, a single family dwelling, or four units, a little trailer park uh, that has people living there, and if it's for sale, or you can talk to people in the sell it to you, uh, do the numbers. I like to use, when you collect 100% of the rent that you're gonna collect, and knock off 45% uh, for expenses, you get 55% left over, if you're lucky. And if that money will support all the expenses of 45%, and the 55% you get to keep, if that will support the payment on the mortgage that you owe, then uh, even if you didn't get any cash flow, 
you get depreciation. You get appreciation if there is any. You might have bought it back 80% back of value, or rather 20% back of value. You bought 80% of value, uh, or 90% of value. You make, you make money the day you bought it, because you have equity immediately if you bought it right. And the interest rate is vitally important to the future of that project. Uh, if you can get it for 4% interest or 5% interest, or even 6% interest, uh, then uh, that's all right. Don't do balloons. Uh, if the seller wants to put a balloon on it, tell him to go to the circuits if he wants to do balloons. Uh, but we don't do balloons. I've done a time or two of them, and it wasn't a happy ending. Uh, you never have the money ready to service the, pay the balloon off when that comes, when that happens. And it'll happen. If you want to sign up, time to go fast, sign up a five-year balloon that you're going to owe 50000 or 100000 five years now, it's all due and payable. And if you don't have the ability to go get the money, to give the people the money that you promised to pay them, it was your fault you promised them. And uh, so the best thing to do is just don't do it. But you could put it on, if somebody wanted a, a balloon in 10 years, put a what if in it, that what if, <coughs> excuse me, I would read a 10 year balloon if, when the time comes, if I can't get the money, or the price of money is too high, or not available, I'll give you a, a five or 10% pay down on what our balance is that I owe you, and go for another 10 years. But build a way to get out of that balloon, like a parachute jumping out of the airplane. Uh, if you can't, can't build a way out, don't do it. But, uh, uh, but if, it'll, if it'll just break even, the tenant's going to pay for it for you. If it's a little cash flow, that'd be better because you can buy groceries with it, with the cash flow. You get appreciation, depreciation, uh, and it can be very, very good. What's next, right? Huh? Uh, when you're talking to people, ask them questions and, li and then listen. How long have you had the property? Uh, how did they buy it? Has it gone up since you've been there? And uh, all kind of stuff. They'll tell you. And if I paid you cash for it, uh, you take the cash down to the bank. If it was today, uh, banks aren't even paying 1%. A lot of them aren't paying a half a percent. So if you carry the mortgage for me, then uh, I'll give you 3%. That's three or four or five times more than the bank's gonna pay you. Aren't you better off? And aren't and I better off? So uh, you get a lot of owner carry financing. And then you put a clause in it. To, if during the life of this mortgage, if the holder, I bought it from Mr. Brown, but Mr. Brown passed away and it went to his heir or his church or his widow or his grandchildren or somebody. But anyway, that guy, that person, or that entity is the new holder. So uh, we don't use him by name, by Mr. Brown, we say the holder. During the life of this mortgage, the holder should be desirous of selling all or any part of the remaining income stream, the payment still owed, then they're to shop it with licensed mortgage brokers only to determine market value at that time. And why you say licensed mortgage brokers, the reason that is, there may be people in the community that worked hard all their life and they've been saving dollars. Now they got a million dollars in the bank, but uh, the bank ain't paying nothing. If they can buy that 3% loan, uh, they make more than, more than the bank would pay them. So, uh, but I don't, want to, I don't want the people, the private people in the community get the right to buy my mortgage that I'm paying. I get, so I built that in, so I got the first right to buy it. And uh, if they're going to sell it, then I want them to shop it with licensed mortgage brokers only to determine market value at that time and bring it back to me and give me eyes for 90 days to make up my mind whether I can dig up that much money or not. And then 90 more days to dig up the money. And if they balk about that, well, what was your number would you like? Well, 75 days and 75 days, or 60 days and 60 days. And if it's 60 days and 60 days, so, uh, 
during that period. I'm the only buyer. They're in a hurry for the, they get the money, and they got to play my game. And I've done quite a bit of that. If I'm paying somebody a thousand dollars a month payment, and I'll let them a little note occasionally with my check, and say if you ever need any money, call me. Maybe I can help. I didn't tell them I got the money. I will help. But uh, if they will call me and let me have a chance at it, how much money did you need? Would uh, ten thousand dollars check be all right? Could that help you? So I'm supposed to be paying a thousand dollars payment per month. That's twelve thousand dollars. But if I write you a check next Tuesday, a cashier's check with your name on it, and uh, I'll get you a check for ten thousand if you'll give me credit for twelve months, twelve payments. So uh, I'll bring you a check quickly. There's no paper, no, 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 no appraisal, no nothing. I'll write you a check for ten thousand dollars, and. Uh, so uh, if that'll help you any, but you gotta give me credit for 12 payments. Have anybody in the room got any idea what the yield would be on that money? If you, it doesn't matter if it's 500 bucks a month payment or $1,000 payment or $2,000 payment, but if you buy 10 payments, pay 10 payments, but get credit for 12, who got the calculator? Is it 20%? Say what? Is it 20%? Who said that? What'd you say? 20%. Try again. It's 32, isn't it? Say it again. Isn't it 32? Stop talking. Isn't it 32%? Don't use the top of your head. Use your calculator. <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> it's 31%. 35. Is it? Yes. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> you may be right. I thought it was more 31. 85%. Okay, I think you're right. <laughs> uh, uh, I think you're right. $10,000. I wrote a check. I get back a $1,000 payment. And I get it 12 times. I did it wrong. Um, give up. Uh, it's 35%. Anyway, uh, you could also, I've asked for, uh, if I ever get them enough money to pay you a year in advance, would you give me a little discount? I've got a couple of them to give me a 7.5% discount, which is about 14% yield. If they give me a 10% uh, discount, the discount, the yield of the money, is 19.91. Is that right? Hello? Still doing last question. <laughs> uh, and if they give you 15%, uh, it's 31. That's where 31 came from. Is that right, buddy? That's right. Okay. Thank you, sir. I'm a graduate of buddy's class, by the way. But I, I failed that one. <laughs> um, anyway, what you got next, right? Okay, uh, here's a wild story, but all true. On Downey Avenue Street in the city of Bellflower, adjacent to 91 Freeway, where are you laughing at? Downey Avenue Street. Okay, Downey Avenue Street. Okay, don't forget about my 10th grade education. But I don't have one of them student loans. Okay, anyway, I uh, bought this little pink house in a deep lot. It's 55 foot wide and uh, 380 feet deep. If you total that up with your machine, it's 20,900 square feet of dirt. And I bought that little house for 38,000. I put $1,000 of my money in the pot. I borrowed 10,000 from a good friend of mine, paid him 10% interest on the money. And uh, I, once a year, I'd give him $1,000 for his interest that he earned that year. And I rented out that little house out for 200 bucks a month. My payment to the Bank of America was $212. They charged me seven and a quarter percent rate for 20 years, and uh, uh, I paid them 212 bucks a month. I had to pay. My tenant paid me 200. 
I had to feed the alligator 12 bucks a month for about four and a half years, I think it was. And uh, uh, I had to pay the property taxes for four and a half years. And uh, I got a chance to sell that property for $4 a square foot. So $4 a square foot times uh, 20900 is 80 thousand dollars I had to pay a real estate commission of 6%, but I stipulated and demanded that I get to do a 1031 exchange. I won't sell it. I'll keep what I got. So I did sell it. I did the exchange. Right around the corner on Artesia Boulevard in Bellflower, I found a little over an acre piece of dirt ground that had three houses on it and a mobile home. I 1031 that money from Downey Avenue Street uh, <laughs> to uh, uh, this property. I kept it about a year and a half or two years. I had never intention of selling it, but somebody came along and said, hey, hey, what would you, you take? So uh, I said, well, I might take, provided I can 1031 into something else. But I, if I can't 1031, I won't do it. So let me look and see what I can find. So I agreed to sell it, and uh, I did 1031 into a property on Artesia Boulevard at Clark Street. I got 86,000 square feet of dirt, and uh, it had a service station on it, a used car lot, and some few other buildings. And I moved that money as a down payment on that 86,000 square feet of ground. But at the corner is now a Chevron gas station that pays real good rent, real good. And uh, <coughs> It, that uses up 20,200 square feet for that station. And, uh, but I've got the other part of the property, most of it's rented out, and uh, it's super, super well. And uh, the value of that property probably is somewhere between four and five million bucks. And I own it today. And uh, I've hocked it three or four times to get money uh, to go do something else. And. Uh, but it's very, very good. My son has an office there. Where are you at? Uh, he's a real estate appraiser, and he has an office in one of the buildings on that property. It was it used to be a, for a doctor's office, so they got all these examining rooms in there probably. How many examining rooms you got? Hello? You're thinking. That'll take a while. Six. Um, how many? Seven, six? Six. Six. Anyway, they got uh, examining rooms that Dr. used to use. Uh, when we took over, they still had some rubber gloves in there. I don't know what the hell they did with them. But, uh, but uh, more than in my domain, maybe. But uh, <laughs> anyway, it's a nice property. But my point is, we really are in the saddle of that property for $1,000 of my money and having the ability to go borrow 10000 and make the down payment. And then two exchanges later, uh, it's been very good. The second exchange, that guy built something like I think it's about 40 little small efficiency apartments. I'm the dummy, I'm the dummy. What I should have done when I said I agreed to sell it to you, I should have insisted on having a first right of refusal to buy the property back if and when he or his heirs ever choose to sell it. But I hadn't been to school yet. Uh, uh, I learned a lot of this stuff from Jim Napier that wrote the little book, Invest in Debt. I'm not, I'm not selling books, but this book right here called Invest in Debt. You can look in your computer and you can find that book available in the computer. Invest in Debt by Jim Napier. Uh, when I read that book, and I had a little, uh, some cassette tapes that he had made. I didn't know the guy from Adam. Uh, but those tapes, uh, the last tape on the, the set of tapes, uh, he said, if I could ever help you, call me. So he gave his phone number. He lives in Northwest Florida, about 500 miles from where I live in Florida. And uh, I dialed that number. And asked his wife, does he ever give classes? Oh, yes, sir, he gives classes. Nowhere on those tapes or in the book did he promote his class. But uh, 
I said, where and when's the next class going to be? I was in California. He, she said, in Jacksonville, Florida, going to be in three weeks from now. So I said, can I pay at the door when I get there? You may. Will you put my name down? Yes, you can. And uh, I said, I'll be there. So that was my introduction to the man and introduction to the calculator. That was 1983. Uh, and uh, I've, since then, I've gone to 75 of his classes. I got a doctorate degree from Jimmy U. <laughs> I sure do. And, uh, but uh, if you folks want to make money in this business, you need to get your calculator and then learn how to use it. Uh, it's a gold mine right there. And now, nowadays, you can put it on your telephone <coughs> for about $6. This thing here costs about $40 at Staples Store. Uh, but uh, I think if you find the book, in the, the book in your computer, they also got calculators available for a little less than Staples. But I don't care if you buy one or not. But uh, uh, we put on everybody's ta chair a little flyer like that, a little three by five card. If you don't have one, we have spares here. Anybody that didn't get one, I sure got some more. A list of classes that are going to be available this year. And, uh, but, but on the other side is Gary Johnson's. He and I do classes together. And Jerry is a brilliant young man. Uh, but uh, I'm lucky to have him do classes with me. Or I mean do classes with him, I don't know. Anyway, his website's on there. Every other Monday, every two weeks, he'll send you a message on your computer if you'll sign up. No charge, it's free. If you ever get a bill, I'll pay it for you. But you no, no charge. But uh, he and I are going to do two classes this year. Uh, the first class we're going to do is uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, May the 28th, 29th, and 30th. California, we're going to be in uh, Santa Ana, September the 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Gary and myself, Santa Ana, California. It's financial freedom, freedom principles. And uh, I don't believe that you can do any big good in this proper in this real estate business if you don't get out and practice. Uh, you got to talk to people, learn how to talk to people, ask questions, and shut up and listen. And uh, I visited people for ten years before they got ready to sell. But the, all private property going to change hands sometimes. So uh, what else we got here, son? Okay. All right. I had a nice house, three bedroom, two bath house in uh, Norwalk. The address of it is 11023 Lendora Street. Or go out and look at it. It apparently was Imperial Highway, one block away. Anyway, I had that house for a long time. Uh, I was in Florida and I found a mobile home park for sale. It's a 100 space mobile home park. Uh, had a, it's for senior citizens only. Uh, has a lovely clubhouse, kitchen in it, uh, men's bathroom, ladies' bathroom, laundry room out the back door around the corner. Uh, nice place. Uh, fence around it, electric gate. If you live there, you get a clicker. It's a 100, 100 space park. And uh, uh, that's the good news. The bad news is the day I found it, 87 people were paying rent at 13 vacancies. Uh, the space rent was 175 a month the day I found it. Uh, the lady told me she wanted all cash. <coughs> How much you want? She said a million four hundred ninety-six thousand. And I said that's too hard a number for me to try to keep track of. I'd rather pay you a million and a half. So uh, I said if you move, if you if you sell somebody the property, are you moving out? No, I'm not moving out. It's my home. I've been here all the time. She, she developed it herself, built it 35 years before I found it. It was not listed for sale. There was no, no real estate commission to pay. And I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. If we make a deal, I'll give you a life estate on your space. She had a double wide mobile home. Very, very nice place. And uh, I'll give you a life estate on your place, your space. You never pay a nickel space rent. You might know I'm going to raise space rent, and uh, I have to raise rent to pay you. 
And uh, so, uh, uh, when I said, what you gotta do for me, if I give you free space rent for as long as you live, when you go to heaven, I get to buy your mobile home for one dollar. And she said, I'll do that. I will do that. Well, she fooled me. She lived 60 months. So, uh, uh, but she said, oh, she wanted all cash. I said, lady, you don't want all cash. Just suppose, I don't have a million and a half anyway, but suppose I go rent the money. And I'll bring you a sack of green money over here in a grocery bag with handles on it. And uh, we'll dump it out on your kitchen table. And you count, count the money. And uh, when you're satisfied the money's all there, then uh, I'll bring a notary person with me. We'll get your notary, signature notarized. And uh, I'll get the deed to the property. You get the sack of money. However, if you put that sack of money under the mattress, under the bed, uh, in a few days, you're going to wake up and decide you better take that money to the bank and put it in the bank for safety reasons. Plus, they'll pay you a little bit of interest. At that moment in time, it was 12 years ago, banks were paying about 3% uh, interest on money. But I said, if you will sell me the property for a million and a half dollars, and let me owe it all to you, let me owe you all the money, I'll pay you 6% on a million and a half dollars. <coughs> That's $90,000 a year interest only. Of course, we'll amortize it. You'll get a bigger payment than that. But I'll give you additional collateral. I got another property free and clear of debt. It's worth about three-fourths of a million bucks. I'll give you a blanket mortgage on your park and my free and clear property. And uh, if you had to foreclose me out, you'd get your park back, get my three and a quarter million dollar break for free. And uh, well, she got nervous. So she went to see a lawyer. And the lawyer said, well, your client's right. You don't want all cash. But he said, we can't let that scoundrel get in for nothing down. And uh, so uh, we're going to make him put up 25% uh, down. So 25% down on a million and a half property is $375,000. So I'm going to start out knowing her one million one hundred twenty-five thousand. But anyway, the, the attorney had to earn his fee so he can't let Clyde have it for 6%. I'm going to make him pay 7%. And not 200, 240 months, not, not 360 months amortization, but 240 months amortization. We well, put that in the calculator. Uh, I'm going to owe him $1,125,000 at 7% for 240 months. The payment is 87,22,11 for 20 years. Well, Mrs. Smith went ahead and went to heaven at 60 months. I paid for 25 more months, and I called her for her son. Her son and daughter inherited the income stream. So I told the son, I said, son, I can rent money today for 4%, pay you off. And I'm thinking about doing that, but I thought I'd give the courtesy of calling you and see if you want to talk about it and make some different arrangements. So he said, let's meet and talk. So we went back to the same attorney. We had our meeting, and the attorney said, Clyde, how about 5.5%? And I said, well, I won't do that, but I'll tell you what I will do. Uh, if we can agree here today, the rate would be 5.25. I can live with that instead of four at the bank. Uh, that way I don't have to appraise the property and put up with the bank, sign all the papers and all that stuff. So I'll agree to 5.25 if we can make a deal here today. When the son, he stuck his hand out, let's shake on that, Clyde, five and a quarter. So. If you put down, with the calculator, put down one million one hundred twenty-five thousand PV minus minus PV at seven percent for two hundred forty months. Uh, make sure what the payment is. Say eighty twenty-two eighty seven twenty-two and eleven, and then go back to N. It says two forty. I've now paid eighty-five payments. So hit minus eighty-five equals the new payment. We owe one hundred fifty-five payments left owed. Is that right? It, what? What? Five five. Yes. Now lower the I to five point two five. How much is it have now? Two point nine two. Huh? Two point nine two. No, no, no. That wasn't the question. You had one hundred fifty five payments. We changed the rate to five point two five. So now, when you change the interest rate to five point two five, the end will change. What's the end say? No, that's wrong. 
Who said that? I say you're sorry. Just say you're sorry. <laughs> one more time. Started out with 1,125. It's 7% for 240 bucks. How much is the payment? Betty? Okay, now go back to N. It says 240 still, right? Hit minus 85 equals. Yeah. Go, now what is N? 155, right? Hello? Okay, now change one thing. Don't get excited. 5.25i. How much is N after that? What? Not right. You're smoking something. <laughs> Buddy, what is it? Hey, it was 155. It goes down, not up. You hammerhead. <laughs> Okay, I'm, you're right. Try that again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. Try it again, guys. Okay. And girls, try it again. Yeah. And hurry. Forty minus eighty-five equals one fifty-five. What is the PV that day? That's what we didn't do. Nine eighty-seven or two twenty-seven. I think that's not right. Yeah, I think that's right. Where's your calculator? Come on. This is so good, we got to get it right. You guys get a number yet? That's we paid those 85 payments. Oh, 135.1. No. What? And what's the unpaid balance that day? 888, 243. Buddy, you got yours? Yeah. Okay. So go back to N, 155. Now change the rate to 5.25. Put that in her eye. And what's N? 135.105. So 20 payments disappeared. How much is 20 payments times that 8722? How much? 174,000 disappeared. Disappeared. I don't have to pay no more. I still owe the money, the 888. I still got to make the payment, 872211. But 20 payments disappeared which is $174,000 evaporated. So uh, that's more bitter. So now since then, I did do that. I've now paid 40 payments with the new deal. So 135.10 hit minus 140. I mean 40 rather. And you got 95 payments left owed. So the PV that day, which is today, I got it paid down to one, for six six seventy seven thousand in my paid balance. However, what I forgot to tell you was uh, old Smokey burned up two trailers <laughs> for smoking in bed. He put, burnt the first one up. Then he bought a pretty neighbor's trailer, moved it in. Within six months he burned it down. <laughs> so I told the manager, tell old Smokey he's gotta go. They're gonna burn the place down one from Oklahoma to town. So that and a few other problems, we're down to 82 people paying rent. But we got the rent, we raised it, we had a board meeting about how much to raise the rent. So the board of, board of directors decided that $50 raise was too much. So the next board meeting on Saturday, 
always have the board meeting on Saturday and uh, in the shower. So, uh, there was only one board member. Me. And uh, I take a bath every shower, whether it was Saturday, every Saturday, whether I needed or not. And uh, anyway, so the board meeting, the next board meeting, we talked about $25 a month. Too much. These people that live there are all seniors. It's a 55 year old apart. Uh, so uh, I didn't want to run anybody off. So we were pay losing money for part of July the 1st. And the, the income, 175 times 87, total add up, and take away 55, 45% of the money, you'll find that I'm, I have to feed the alligator 348 bucks a month. Because there wasn't enough, out of that 55% of 175, times 87, there wasn't enough money to pay the payment. So I had to feed the alligator $348 a month for six months. So at the board meeting, finally agreed upon a $10 raise per month times 87 customers. That's $870 a month. But I get to keep 55% of that number, and that moves the $148 loss, or $348 loss, to about $150 profit. So I'm making 150 bucks a month. I invested $375,000 of my money. And here I'm getting $148 cash flow. Don't that make you sick? <laughs> it sure did me. But uh, I got my calculator out and figured out that I can depreciate that part. I can depreciate 75% of the purchase price, which happens to be 1125 divided by 27 and a half years. So you discover that was 40,909 that I can depreciate. So if I made 100,000 uh, and 140,909 is what I made, I can deduct that 40,909 from my gross earnings before I pay a tax on it. So, the depreciation saves me uh, 40909 which is how much is that a month? How much? Nah, you can smoke or something. Because the law says I can do it in 27 and a half years. Why in the hell would I go up? Sit it down. What's the matter with you? Go back to sleep. <laughs> Anyway, 40,909 is the depreciable portion divided by 12. So it gives me uh, about, how much is that? 3409. How much? 3409. I can't hear you. 3409. Month? 34 what? 3409, 3409 dollars and eight cents. I don't believe that. But anyway, um, anyway, the, uh, when we're making that payment of 87 20 to 11, and started out with a million 125, when you paid 36 months payments, what would the new PV be? When you paid 36 of 240, uh, you're down to 204 months to pay. What would your PV be that day? Well, let me tell you, the pay down for the first 36 payments is $86,000 and change. And divide that by 36 months, by pay down monthly for the first 36 months was $2,395 a month pay down. So even though I was losing $348 and feed the alligator, my principal pay down every month was $2,395. So I'm getting the benefit of that. I'm getting the depreciation that they're going to pay out of Sam. Uh, I think it was $1,193 per month that they have to send back to Sam. That's what the real number is. And uh, But uh, 82 people paying rent 
of, of 275 now the rent is. So what's the gross rent now? How much? Buddy, where are you? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. <laughs> he said he couldn't hear you. Repeat the question. So he can do it on the calculator. Okay. 22,550. Say it again. 22,550. What the hell is that? 22,550. That's the gross income. Yes. Yeah. Minus 45%. Get 55% of that number. We keep 55% of that number. How much is that? What do you want to know? 12.4 The question is, 275 rent times 82 people, how much is that? 12.4 Okay, so the net is 12. Okay, now look for times 5, 5, times 55. Minus 87, 22, the payment. How much cash flow is there now? 3600 a month. 3680 dollars 3, 3, per month. Okay, not bad. Now the house in Norwalk that I sold, I was paying, I was collecting $1,195 rent. If I had it today, it'd be about 2100 a month rent. And I'd get to keep two thirds of that. So two thirds of 21 is $1,400 a month that I could I'd have the place paid for it today, and I'd be getting $1,400 a month that I could buy whiskey with. <laughs> and uh, so the $1,400 a month from Norwalk, the, the house, uh, the benefits of that mobile home park in Lakeland, Florida is way, 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 way more than, uh, so I don't know exactly what the park is worth. My equity in the park today is worth, but it's about a million and Made and a half bucks, I think, didn't it? And uh, anyway, if I had the house in Norwalk, it's probably worth four and a quarter today, about. So uh, I think I made a good, that's 10 fingers. What that's 10 mean? fingers. That is, can you go another 10, 15 minutes and call okay. it good? All right, 10 minutes, that's it? Yeah. Okay, y'all heard what the lady said. I got to get it quick here. Okay. What else we got? Walk the mortgage. Uh, walk the mortgage. Uh, we bought a property in Belmont, California on Rose Street. The, the structures on the place was old and dilapidated, but it was a dandy piece of dirt. And the guy that owned it was wanting to move to Florida, back where they came from. It actually is wife from Florida. And a uh, nice piece of property. But he told me he'd sell it to him for $300,000, but he was building a home in Florida and he needed $100,000 down. So I'm gonna give him $100,000 down and he's gonna carry it 200 at 7%. I don't remember what the term was agreed on, 30 years I think. But uh, anyway, but he said the property needed to be re developed, redeveloped. So I said, Jack, you're absolutely right. Uh, that's exactly what it needs. But if I owe you $200,000, when I go to redevelop it, if I go to the bank and rent the money to do the development, then, uh, uh, I can't do it because I owe you the money. So I need you to cooperate with me and give me the right to walk your mortgage to some other parcel that I already own in Bellflower. I won't take you out in the Mojave Desert. I'll take mortgage somewhere in Bellflower. And uh, so he agreed that he would do that. So we did do that. And uh, I bought the property, gave him his hundred down, he needed to build his house with in Florida. Owed him two hundred. But rather than keep it on that property, I put the mortgage on some someplace else in Bellflower. And everything's fine. We did the development, made money with the property, made money with the development, and uh, uh, everything was fine. Well, the next time we went to move it, uh, we called him up and said, we're gonna do it again. We need to move that mortgage someplace else because we're gonna develop that property. And uh, okay, okay, well, we did that three or four times. Finally, one time he said, Clyde, he said, you've been so good paying, and we're going to lift it off the property, and you don't need to worry about it. Uh, just keep on making the payment like you've been paying, and we'll be just fine. So uh, we did it with no security. Then as time went by and interest rates went back down, uh, I went to see him, 
in their new home in Florida. Two or three times I did go see them when I was down there. And uh, they lived about 150 miles away from where I live. I'd go see them, pet the dog a little bit. And uh, so I told them, I said, the interest rate's too high. Uh, I like owing you the money. I know you like getting the money. And uh, but can we adjust the rate down to 5%? So they agreed to do that. So we lowered the rate to 5%. We kept the payment the same. But then I said to him, he was an Italian guy, nice guy, lift barbells out in his backyard and drink still water all the time. And uh, so uh, I said, Jack, are you spending all that money I sent you? No, we, we live on part of it. Put the other half in the bank. And I said, you put it back in the bank and you get 3% on it. Here, I'm paying you seven. Uh, now you're gonna lower it to five, but how about we let's stretch out, the, lower the payment. So let's stretch out the term. You're gonna outlive your money if you keep getting this money like you've been getting. So they, they lowered the payment. I think it was the payment was 2000 or 22, I forgot. But uh, uh, we lowered it to 15. Later we lowered it to 1000. So those people use that money to live on and uh, they're happy and we're happy. But you can do that kind of crazy stuff if you run it through your computer, your brain, and put it on paper and a computer and it works real good, real good. What else have we got? Blanket mortgage. Oh. Blanket mortgage. Blanket mortgage. Okay. Do you have time for that? Okay. Yeah, I got time for that. Uh, <laughs> there's a property on a Lander Boulevard. I already told you where the barn was. Uh, but next door to the barn, there was another parcel of property that had been a gas station. And uh, I visited that guy, found him. He lived in Reno, Nevada. Now, Incline Village on the north shore of Lake Tahoe is where he really lived. And uh, so uh, I visited with him for 10 years at least. Finally, one day he showed up and he said, Clyde, you've been trying to buy my property for 10 years. He said, I need some quick money. Uh, my price is $99,000 if you give me some money quick. And I said, well, I don't have $99,000, Jack, but get in the car and go with me to my bank. And I think the bank will give me the money. And I think we can get a commission, uh, a commitment in 10 minutes at the bank. And uh, so we went down to my bank with him in the car. Went in and told the banker I want to borrow $99,000 to give this guy. And I don't want to put any down payment on it. I'll give you a blanket mortgage, Mr. Bank, on that property next door where the barn used to be. And this property I'm buying. And uh, the bank said they'll do that. So... Uh, the bank charged me 10% interest, $99,000. Put that down in your calculators. Uh, 99000 I owe the money, 10% interest. I found a tenant for it before I bought the property for a closed escrow. The tenant said he'd pay sixteen fifty a month rent, and he'd pay the property taxes. I told him I'd pay the first half of the first year property taxes, but after that, I'd pay him, but he had to reimburse me for the tax bill. If you do that, pay me on time. I'll never raise your rent. So he's gonna pay me 16.50. Ask your calculator how many months it took to kill that mortgage. 99,000 the minus PV, 10% I, 16.50 payment. 83, 83 and a half. Interest. Say that one more down real loud. 83, 83 payments, 83 and a half payments. Okay, so 83 and a half payments it took that individual to buy the property for me. I didn't pay a nickel for it. I just knew how to do it learn how to do it, and to borrow the money at the bank, and let them make the payment. And now today, I have that thing rented for a pretty good number, and I'm getting, I'm getting 3,000, but the guy I got now, I'm paying half the property taxes, and he pays the other half. So I'm getting 2,900 for poor old client a month. And uh, ask your calculator, put $2,900 in the payment, and 6% I, for 9,000 months under N, what is the PV? Staff, what is it? What? 580. 580? Is that right? So let's call it a half a million. And I didn't pay a dime for it. Not a dime. But you gotta learn, if I give you a fiddle or a guitar or a clarinet, you gotta learn how to play it. And it's a real estate game, that's what you gotta do, learn how to play the game. And uh, uh, anybody in the room ever had a ride with Clyde? 
Really? You win? You win? Okay. Anyway, I give a ride to Clyde at no charge, but you do have to buy dinner. I'll show you all the stuff I'm talking about. Uh, in, case you, in case you doubt it, I'll show you what I do and how I do it. I got one more thing to tell you. I found a situation in our town, the Baptist Church, a group of people in the Baptist Church, long years ago, in the late 60s, uh, they built, they bought some property together, bought seven, six, six or seven little parcels of ground, and with the idea of building a senior citizen building for old folks. And uh, so they did. They built 144, 144 units. And uh, so uh, one of our family friends called me one day and said, Clay, would you help us, help me get into that senior building? I said, well, Francis, I'll go. To, if, I don't, if I don't make it today, by tomorrow I'll be there and I'll find out. Well, that guy, the manager of that building, said, well, Clyde, he said, we're full. We have a waiting list. And I said, well, put her name on the waiting list if you would. How many people are on the waiting list? I think it was 400 something. 400. Anyway, more than 400 people wait on the waiting list to get a 144 unit building. I said, you, you might be talking about the rest of that lady's life. When I left that property that day, and the light went on in my brain, if there's that much demand for a senior building spaces, we need to get a piece of dirt and build a building. So we did. We rented the money to build by the dirt, rented the money to get the construction built. We got a 100 unit, unit build, built, 100 units, uh, with four owners, so I own 25% of that building. And uh, uh, we built it over 1986. Uh, it's full, completely full. We got a, a few people, three or four or five people waiting to get in. When we were building that thing, I had leased out my warehouse three years before. I was old and tired, quit business, quit the produce business. Uh, but the guy that leased it was a little short guy with a big mouth. And uh, uh, he wanted a 20 year lease. I said, Jimmy, you don't need a 20 year lease, take five years. No, I want a 20 year lease, five, not even blah, blah, blah. So uh, I said, okay, take 20 years. So uh, he did, I did, he signed the papers. Three years later, he went bankrupt. So I got my key back to my warehouse. We were about almost finished that first building, 85% complete. I said, I'm gonna keep a fence around my place till you guys get this thing finished and on time, on final and open. And we'll tear down my nice warehouse if y'all brave enough, pay me 400,000 for my dirt, which was 10 bucks a square foot. And uh, uh, we'll build another unit, another building. So we did. So we got another building, 100 units. So we got 100 to 100, still got them. The space rent, the apartment rent rather, is 900 bucks a unit for a one bedroom. Nice, clean units. And uh, we keep them nice. But they were full. We got $900, $900 a month coming in times 97 places. There's 100 spaces, but we've got a manager and assistant manager and a handyman's been with us after 25 years. So he gets a place to live. So we've got 97 people paying rent. How much is that? 97 times 9, 87, 900. 87,300. How much? 87,300. Okay. 87,300. What? 21,825. Minus 67. Anyway. So, uh, so uh, how much was that total? 87? 87,300. Now, the expenses, these people don't already never move out unless they go to heaven. Uh, uh, and some of them don't make that. But anyway. Uh, take away a third of that money, divide it by three, times two equals what? 58,141.87. Put that in the payment, and put the uh, 6% I for 9,000 months under N, no future value. How much is present value? 11,628,302. You're teasing me. <laughs> Times two <laughs> equals what? 23,556,000. 
divided by divide that by four because that's just my, I'm a four. I ain't even half there. How much? God, I want me. You forgot. <laughs> anyway, folks, we got that property. We didn't put a dollar in it. We borrowed all the money. But now, mind you, we signed on the dotted line at the bank for the money. Had we weren't successful, they'd come get anything and everything we got until they got their money back. But we were so confident that the demand was there, and it was, uh, then we had no problem, no problem. And uh, we've been getting cash flow from it every month since we've been open. And the, the pay down is almost paid for now, both of them. Uh, we owe less than about probably 700000 per building. We said, oh, not bad, not bad. But anyway, uh, we got anything else on the list? That's it? Is that it? Any questions? I have a question. <laughs> is that your car? No, oh, ma'am. <laughs> uh, it is not. It's not, it, it's it's not, not that car. It is pretty, though, ain't it? It is pretty. It is pretty. Uh, I have had three or four new Cadillacs. Never a pink one, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I like the pink one. Okay. It is pretty. Photoshop. Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, can we have a hand? Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, please, please. Get a calculator and learn how to use it. Uh, and get a Jimmy book if you want one. You'll like it. If you go out of the book and don't like it, I'll give you money back, but I'll take your book. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, honey. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, one more hand. You can see the, uh, with all the experience that the client has, all he does is walk through his stories and you know, you learn. You learn how you can do it. You learn how you just be willing to ask, be willing to talk, and be willing to listen. Use a calculator, and you get, uh, well, at least the last calculation was $6 million later. So, does that work? And you don't have to be mean, you don't have to be taking, you don't have to be difficult. Okay, but you gotta keep it short, because I gotta let these people go. Yes, ma'am. One more thing. When you get proficient with your calculator and now talking to the public about buying their property, I've been advised by Mr. Napier, don't whip out your calculator and show how smart you are. <laughs> Keep your calculator in your pocket or in your car. Write down the numbers on a piece of paper and go in there with them on a piece of paper. But don't whip out your calculator and show how brilliant you might be. Thank you. Love you.